Good evening, church families. Uh, tonight is the Wednesday evening service, and for this evening, I've decided to, um, instead of continuing our series on 1 John, I would like to give you a verse and a message that's actually been on my heart for several weeks, almost from the beginning of this crisis in which we find ourselves today. And uh, the verse is found in 2 Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 14. 2 Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 14. The Bible says, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Father God in heaven tonight, Lord, this verse has been on my mind, as I said, for several weeks. Lord, the message of this verse is for God's people. It's for us. It's for believers. Lord, I pray that tonight as God's people, we would pray and we would beg you for the healing of America, the healing of this great nation. Lord, may this truly be the burden of our heart. Turn us back to you, dear Lord, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. We're all praying, perhaps even more this week, for the thousands who are infected with the COVID-19 or the coronavirus. We've been told by many that this will likely be the worst week for folks who have found with the virus and that many, many will die as a result. One individual told us, told us it'll be like a 9-11 or maybe a Pearl Harbor. I remember on 9-11 and shortly thereafter how how the nation began to turn back to God. I remember President Bush getting up and saying, pray that things can get back to normal. And I said, no, we don't want it to be normal. We want God's people to be different. And I don't know what's gonna happen in the next week or two weeks or more and as a result of all this, but it is my prayer it is my desire that God's people step up and that God's people realize that if this nation is going to turn back to God, if this nation is going to truly be healed by God, it must begin with God's people. Does God have an answer for America? Does God have an answer for this nation at this time, in this time of a crisis? We know God's power can heal those who are ill. We know God's power can heal those that are dying because he is all powerful. We know that God knows the cure for this wicked virus and any other disease for that matter that will destroy a person's body because God is all knowing. He knows the cure. So does scripture reveal why perhaps God has not stepped up yet to heal America and, in fact, for that matter, the world. Can we, as God's people, be in that position to ask God, yes, to beg God to heal our land? Listen, my friend, the unsaved do not have the answer for our present situation. Oh, some scientist, and that scientist may be saved or lost, but some scientist may come up with a vaccine, but that's not really the answer. God is the answer. And I will thank God for the vaccine, but God is still the answer. Now, I realize the verse I read a moment ago is specifically addressed to the nation of Israel, but I also believe that it has certainly an application for you and I today in America. First of all, I want us to see that the people, who are the people to ask God for healing? Who are the people that God expects to ask him 
for the healing. Notice it says, if my people, if my people. See, it's the people of God that he expects to ask for God's healing upon this land. And that healing needs to come from the request of God's people. In essence, the foundation of the lack of healing of our nation is our fault. It rests on the people of God for not being what we ought to be before God. God's people have accepted abortion as normal or even as a right. See, it's, it's God's people that have accepted homosexuality as an acceptable alternative lifestyle in many cases. See, God's people have grown accustomed to even accepting immorality in our nation, such as living together outside of marriage. See, God's people are at the core of the answers for our nation. If my people, if God's people, listen, government is not the answer. Religion is not the answer. Money and fame are not the answer. You and I, as God's people, must earnestly endeavor to intercede to God for the healing of our nation. See, if our nation is going to be healed, it's going to be from God's people. If my people. Then he says, which are called by my name. God's people that are called by God's name. As you and I, as the people of God, we must not shirk the name Christian. We must not be ashamed of being the people of God and presenting and promoting the teachings of God's word. Don't shy away from the truth of God's word, even when it's not popular. And let's be frank and honest, there's many times it's not going to be popular. To be called a Christian is more than just a title. It's a privilege, but yet also a responsibility of which you and I must not shirk. The Bible says they were first called Christians in Antioch. Now those, Christ, those Christians in the first century, the name Christian was not a compliment. It was spoken in derision against those believers who followed the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says that the people of God must be the ones to ask God for the healing of America. The people of God must be the ones who beg God for the healing of America. Are you begging God? Are you asking God? Are you pleading with God to heal America? Secondly, the Bible says, the position to ask of God for his healing. What position do we need to be in? Yes, we need to be the people of God, but what position do we need to be in? Notice the Bible says, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves. Humble themselves. What does it mean to be humbled? It means to be brought low. It means to be subdued. It means to be brought down. Maybe God is using the circumstances in which we find our nation today to humble us. Humble us. See, true humility can only be done by oneself. Oh, we may physically be able to force someone to do something, we can even force them perhaps to kneel, but they can only humble themselves if they, as a part of their will, desire to be humbled. The required position of God's people to ask God to humble ourselves, to humble ourselves. Let me ask you all to get together the question, are we humble or are we proud? Are we humble as God's people? Are we humble as Christians? When you and I come before God, do we 
kneel with him in our heart? And as we're physically able, do we kneel with him on our knees? Now, I have to be honest. It's getting harder and harder to get down on my knees physically. But I want to make sure my heart is humbled. I want to make sure my heart has bowed the knee before God. Thirdly, the prayer. Notice the prayer to ask God for healing. It says, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray. Now, there's several different words for pray or prayer in the Bible. This particular word here for pray doesn't mean formally worship or even directly go to God, but for oneself. What it means is to intervene. It means to be the go-between for someone else, to, to mediate on behalf of someone else. It means to make supplication or petition, not for oneself per se, but for others. Quite truly, the most uh, of the prayers of God's people for most of us, most of the time, are selfish in nature. Our focus as Christians must always be, first of all, for others. In Philippians chapter 2 and Verse number three in Philippians chapter two, verse three, the Bible says, let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, listen, let each esteem other better than themselves. Listen, we're not just look to each other as being equals, as believers. We're to look to the other person as even being better than ourselves. I want us to listen to a, a special song that's been on my heart for really quite a while, but I believe this song speaks to this passage of scripture. The song is Heal Our Land. Thank you. 
Next, we see the presence to ask God for healing. The presence to ask God for healing. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, and notice, and seek my face. To seek my face. The word seek is oftentimes talked about praying. It means to ask. It means to request and, in essence, almost, almost demand God's face. Now, what's the face of God? What does it mean to seek the face of God? Well, the face of God is his presence. It's to seek his person. It's to seek looking at him face to face, to be in the presence of Almighty God. Now listen, God's focus does not change. But our focus does. So often we can focus on the news events or the things going on around us. and We can easily lose our focus to be upon God. But God is our healer. Our focus must be on God as the healer of our land to look at him face to face. For those as parents, we know that in order to get your child's attention, they need to focus their eyes upon you. For God to have our attention, we must focus our spiritual eyes upon him. God says to seek his face. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and then listen, and turn from their wicked ways. This speaks to the purpose to ask for God's healing. Why should we ask for God to heal? What's the ultimate purpose? Is it just to cure this one virus? Is it just to get this problem out of our way? What's the purpose? The purpose is to turn from our wicked ways, to turn from that which is evil, to go back or to turn back from the wicked, evil, bad and displeasing ways of this world. Our ways speak of our course of life. It even speaks to our wicked moral character. It should not be surprising that the unsaved are wicked. But when God's people are wicked, it speaks to our evil moral character. And what kind of example can we be if we are wicked before the wicked? A primary purpose of asking God for God to heal is for God's people to turn, turn back from their wicked ways and turn to God's righteousness. Now again, this is not speaking about the unsaved. It's speaking about the saved. So you and I as Christians, we still struggle with sin. In our heart, we're still desperately wicked. You and I must turn and repent of our wicked ways. If my people, 
which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. And now listen, listen, listen to the priorities of asking God for healing. What can we expect? What can we ask? What can we anticipate for God to do? First of all, number one, he says we can hear from heaven. To hear from heaven. Then will I hear from heaven. We will listen to, yes, we will obey the God of heaven. We will give heed to what he says. Do we really, do we truly want God to hear us? Do we truly want to hear from God? Does, does God really, does God really hear our prayers? Only if we meet the conditions. Do we really want God to hear our prayers? Secondly, not only to hear from heaven, but also to forgive our sins. It says, then will I hear from heaven? Not might, but will. And then will forgive their sin. What does it mean to forgive? To forgive means to pardon. A governor or president can pardon someone, even though they may be guilty. They can still pardon them. Well, guess what? God pardons us of our sin when we meet his conditions. To pardon not only includes the sin, but also the punishment and even the guilt of that sin, the condition of that sin are removed when we meet God's conditions. We know that sin is to trespass, to miss the way, to go wrong including and curing the guilt for that sin. But God says, I want to forgive you of your sin. If you meet God's conditions, if my people, which are called by my name, will meet these conditions, then God will speak from heaven. We can hear from heaven. He'll forgive our sin. And then thirdly, heal our land. Folks, our, our land, our, our country, America is sick. It's sick. I mentioned some of the reasons earlier. The Bible says that the judgment will begin at the house of God. The reason our nation is the way it is is because of the Christians. To heal our land. What does it mean to heal? It means to make healthy. It means to heal as a physician of men, but also of one's heart. The land is our country. It's our nation. It's the inhabitants, the people of our country. Father, Father, heal our land. God wants to heal America. Our country was founded upon Christian principles. That was the the mooring, that was the foundation of which we were founded. But ladies and gentlemen, we've moved off that foundation. Our country is sick. I've said this before and I'll say it again. I fear that America's in for a great judgment from God. Because you see, if God lets America get away with what she is and what she's doing, in essence, God's going to have to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah. Our country is ill. Our country is sick, not just from a virus, but we're ill, we're sick, and we need healing from our sin. If my people which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. I'm getting to that age where I'm getting more and more concerned about what I'm leaving to my children. 
and the grandchildren and her great-grandchildren. And I don't want to leave America the way she is. I don't want to leave America in the condition that it is. Father, Father, heal our land. Father God in heaven, you're not pleased with our nation. You are not pleased with our country. America is sick. America is ill. America experiences so many that die and go straight to hell because Christians are not standing up to be the Christians we ought to be. Father, it's our fault. It's not the unbeliever, it's the believer. It's not the unsaved, it's the saved that aren't right with you. So Lord, please, please forgive us of our sin. Heal us, O oh Lord, we pray in Jesus' name.